22 years. 22 years of heart, of pain, of disappointment. 22 years of glorious failure, of near misses, and 22 years of being all so close, but yet so far. We've had disasters, moments of despair. Chris Awalumo, Georgia away, dodgy refs, 4-6-0, a draw in the Pharaohs. Boosgate and Stuart Armstrong forgetting to clear his lines. There's also been hope, moments of joy, Faddy in Paris, Griffiths free kicks, late winners against Liechtenstein, Gaz Caldwell against the French, the Tartan army travelling all over and the endless belief that success is just around the corner. We've had Craig Brown, Bertie Votes, Walter Smith, Alec McLeish, George Burley, Craig Levine, Gordon Stratton, Alec McLeish. Again. And now we've got Stevie Clark. Yet again we've reached the final hurdle, but will we fall? Or will this time be our time? We've got hope. We've got quality left backs. We've got a boogie in centre half from Aberdeen. We've got an Australian striker. And we've got Super John McGinn. I believe. I believe that this Scotland team, our Scotland team, is a Scotland team that finally achieves what so many have tried and failed to do before them. We're on our way to a major tournament. We're on our way to Euro 2020. We've all got our Scotland memories, the reasons we care, the reasons we believe. We spoke to some friends of the show for a trip down memory lane. What's happening to it? Shut up, Div here. The lads have asked me on to give what my best memory is as a Scotland fan. You might be asking yourself, why are you wearing a Brazil polo shirt? It's only because I think that Lyndon Dykes is the second coming of our nine. There, I said it. Live on this channel. What are you going to say about it? Anyways, my best memory was when I was in primary school. I think it must have been about P3 or something. And Scotland usually give like 15, 20 tickets to local primary schools. So are the youth. You know, the next players of tomorrow never quite worked out for me, like food too much, could go along and support the national team. So, went along, and it was Scotland versus Georgia. I think Chris Boyd was playing, and Big Beatty, Big Beatty Nut was playing as well. We end up going 1 0 up, and then it's 1 0, and then Big Craig Beatty scores a goal in the last minute to, to beat Georgia. And I remember me and all my classmates, all the troops, going off our absolute nuts because we'd just beaten. Georgia. It was class though, to be fair. The Sky Sports cameras and all that came and they were recording us. We ended up in the telly. I think I might have actually called it on the side. However, we'll not talk about that. But that is my first memory, I would say, of Scotland. Going to a game anyways. And I've got to say it's my best. I'll probably be saving we beat Slovakia, but we all know how that finished. Hopefully, hopefully the Serbia game goes a wee bit better. Hi Ryan, it's your big pal C-Skill HD here. And uh, my favourite Scotland memory, well, um, me and you are kind of in the same boat, we're not old enough to have really seen much but I would say that my best memory is my first one and it is the 1-0 against France, James McFadden, top bins after the keeper palms it but it's still top bins uh, in the iconic Scotland strip of course so yeah that would be my, my best Scotland memory out of the two that I probably have so yeah hopefully more to come uh, against Serbia and then next summer. So, my favourite Scotland memory, well, I'm going to kind of cheat and go with two. Um, first one, one of my earliest memories supporting Scotland, um, a certain Mr James McFadden in Paris. One main memory, I have watched that game in the house with my dad, him shouting at the TV, get McFadden off, he's knackered, he's doing nothing, get him off. Next minute later, a ball drops down top corner. And I suppose that's why I'm hooked on Scotland, that's why I've always loved watching Scotland, even when we've been pish, and God knows we have been over the years. But yeah, that's definitely the earliest one. Um, and maybe the best, but for me, maybe not an obvious one, but Scotland-Slovakia at Hamden a couple of years ago. A game similar to what we've had recently where they've built our hopes up, we go and get a really late winner. Everyone on the ground thought it was Chris Martin that got it, but it was actually an own goal by Martin Skirtle. And the atmosphere at Hamden that night was amazing. The place was rocking. Um, sadly, we've not had that for the Israel game, but, you know, Serbia away Thursday night. It's typical Scotland, they've got us all believing again, they've got us all caring again. Um, and it's just down to the boys to go and do it again and hopefully we can do this video again in a year's time and our favourite memory can be watching Scotland at the Euros.
Hi guys, my favourite memory of supporting Scotland goes back to when I was a wee boy, possibly about eight years of age. 1973, Scotland against Czechoslovakia. If we defeated the Czechs, we would qualify for the World Cup finals in Germany in 1974. Just under 100,000 inside Hamden Park. The atmosphere was unbelievable and we had a right good side out there as well to take on the Czechs. Uh, Ali Hunter, who played for Celtic, he was in goal. Sandy Jarden, Danny McGrain uh, in the centre of defence was Jim Holton, George Connolly and then the midfield was not too bad either Tommy Hutchison, Willie Morgan uh, David Hay and Billy Bremner with up front Kenny Dugleish and Dennis Law and we had a sub who would have an impact a little later on in a certain Joe Jordan. So that was the team we took the lead through Jim Holton we thought we were going in the right direction and then would you believe it, Ali Hunter had an absolute stinker, a shot from a about 20 yards out, it was easy to save and he let it slip under his body from Nahoda of Czechoslovakia and they were back level. We thought it was going to go right down to the wire and it did. Willie Morgan on the right hand side, I'll never forget it, crosses it over and the substitute with the number 16 on his back, Joe Jordan, with a diving header into the back of the net to send Scotland to the World Cup Finals, jumping about like mad. There was no room to breathe in the stadium, but it was a night I will never forget. Scotland 2, Czechoslovakia 1 and we're on our way to the World Cup. Happy days. Hello Ryan and David, thank you very much for asking me to get involved with this wee video and of course I've been asked to bring to you my favourite Scottish moment. Now, there are a couple I want to bring up, so before I tell you my true moment that made me appreciate the national team, I mean, being a Motherwell fan myself, it would be wrong not to talk about... Also, a local artist that works in the area that my dad uh, works in uh, actually drew this picture. Now, you probably won't be able to zoom in, so I've got a picture on the overlay. It's an artwork of that goal in France being scored, and it's, of course, been signed by the man himself, uh, which was for my 18th birthday. However, the moment I learned to appreciate Scotland was... The first ever game I went to, Scotland versus Georgia in March 2007. Chris Boyd scored an early header to put Scotland into the lead against Georgia and then shot at Arvaladze, ex-Rangers, equalised for the Georgians midway through the, the first half before Craig Beattie, of all people, scored in the last minute to win the game 2-1. That was my first ever trip to Hamden and that is my moment I want to dedicate to this video. So yes, thank you for having me on and here's hoping Scotland can bring home our first qualification in my lifetime. Favourite Scotland memory? Very easy. Lee Griffiths. Two free kicks. Hamden Park against the old enemy. Look, the game didn't pan out the way that it should have. That is the story of Scotland and that's what we need to fix this time. Don't let any stupid mistakes happen. Armstrong, clear the ball. But we're not going to be in that situation. Scotland have gave us something to shout about in the past, but this is the chance to create the best memory yet. A lifetime I've went without actually cheering for my country in a passionate way, like, you know, I could this week. But we can do it. Griffiths, step up and date one more time for this pal. My favourite memory of a Scotland team was France 98, the opening game against Brazil. Um, obviously it was the opening ceremony and, and, and all the all the interlude that preceded the game, my and dad actually let me stay off school that day, I think it was like an afternoon kick-off or something, but obviously the build-up all started like hours before the game, so um, they were uh, good enough to let me stay off school and watch it. Um, I had a couple of my friends round and, and we just sat there mesmerised about with all the opening ceremony stuff and then obviously to see Scotland line up against such a a good team like Brazil and all their star names at the time. Um, obviously it was a close game as well, with Brazil taking the lead quite early on. You expected a bit of a, a bit of a doing for Scotland, but they, they managed to stay in the game and, and, and equalised, I think, through John Collins' penalty. Um, and actually they were unlucky not to kind of get something from from the game on the day. So um, yeah, that's my favourite memory of a, of a Scotland performance. Hello, this is international football commentator Derek Ray talking about my favourite Scotland supporting memory. 
I'm going to take you back to 1974, the first World Cup I can remember watching. I was seven years of age at the time. And Scotland, under Willie Ormond, were in a group with Zaire, Brazil and Yugoslavia. They beat Zaire 2-0 in their first game, should have won by more. They admitted later that they conserved their energy for the second match against Brazil, which was going to be a big task against the likes of Rivellino and Jairzinho. But my goodness, Scotland played brilliantly. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brazil. They should have won the game. Billy Bremner coming so close. Have a look at it on YouTube. It looked as though it was going in. It wouldn't go in. Scotland had to settle for a draw. And they also drew the last game against Yugoslavia. So actually, the only team in that World Cup not to taste defeat in a single game. West Germany won it, but they lost to East Germany during that World Cup. Some will say that is the Scotland story for you, but I was lucky because as a young person, Scotland went to every World Cup, 74, 78, 82, 86, 90, missed out 94, then again in 98. So now we all have to hope that Scotland's luck is going to change against Serbia Let's hope it does. Now I'm probably living in the moment right now, but by far my most favourite has to be that screamer from Ryan Jack versus Serbia to send us on our way. What a goal, what a player, man, honestly. Uh, when's this actually coming out, actually? I don't know if I've just spoiled it. We've all got fond memories, but it's time for this Scotland team to make some new ones. We believe. Do you?